Hi, I am Dev Chetri Thakur from Informatica RNG, and this is the second video of Informatica Big Data Management on Azure. In this video, we will see the possible path the deployment can take, and additionally, we will go through the various plates, fields, and the inputs. There are four paths that the deployment can take. In the first path, we can configure the domain and also create a new agent and cluster on Azure Data Lake Store or Windows Azure Storage Blob. Along with this, we can also create an Azure SQL Server and Data Warehouse. This part deploys the complete solution. In the second path, we can configure the domain and also create a new agent inside cluster. This path will not create the SQL Server or Data Warehouse connection in the domain because the same resources were skipped. In the third path, we can configure the domain on an existing HBS type HNC cluster with Azure storage as the primary storage. Along with this, we can also create an Azure SQL Server and Data Warehouse. This part deploys the complete solution. Finally, in the fourth path, we can configure the domain on an existing HBS type HNC cluster with Azure storage as the primary storage and skip Azure SQL Server and Data Warehouse creation. This will not create the corresponding connections in the domain. In the previous video, we have gone through the minimum requirements of the deployment and we have searched for Informatica Big Data Management product on the Azure Marketplace. We are going to pick up from that point and navigate to the blades to get an overview of the requirements. I will go ahead and search for the product now. I can see it is already being suggested. When I click on continue, it will redirect me to the Azure portal. So in our previous video, we left at this point and we shall continue from here. We have the place prefilled to save us time, so we're going to switch to that now. Here I have all the blades pre-populated with the correct values. In total, we have eight interactive blades and the input fields on those blades have added tooltip that can be pointed to get more details about the fields. I can go ahead and point out this tooltip to know more about this field that we are using. This is the first blade. It asks about the basic information that is related to the deployment, such as subscription, resource group name and location. And based on the location we select, we will get the choice to create the cluster. If a location is selected that does not support HDS cluster, then the option to create the cluster will not appear. Now I will click on OK and move to the next blade. In blade 2, we need to provide the Informatica domain related information. Here we will have to browse to the local hard drive and select a valid VDM license key. Once that is done, we can click on OK and move to the next blade. Blade 3 is used to collect the node VM information and the same is passed to deployment for creating the VM. Here we can set the number of nodes we want in the domain. The master node VM will have one as a suffix and the gateway node from here onwards will have an incremented value of that as a suffix. So this is where I can manage the number of nodes that I need in my deployment. So if I've entered ACVM as the machine name for the master node and there are two nodes, then ACVM1 is the master node and ACVM2 becomes the gateway node. Now we will move on to the next blade. Blade 4 is an important blade that asks the user to enter the details for the database. We can create a new database or use an already existing SQL Server database configured on a Azure VM infrastructure. This database is used for storing the domain metadata. This is SQL Server on Azure VM and we are not using Azure SQL Server platform as a service here. When selecting an existing database, we need to enter the database details of SQL Server on Azure VM and not of SQL Server Platform as a Service database. So here I have the fields and you can use this to change to an existing database. I'll go ahead, click on OK to go to the next blade. 
Blade 5 needs to be populated with the details of the cluster. We can choose to create a new cluster or use an already existing cluster. And also when we select an existing cluster, we need to select the same virtual network on which the existing cluster was created. While creating a cluster, we can choose from Azure Data Lake Store or Windows Azure Storage Blob as the primary storage for the cluster. If you scroll down, I can see I have a toggle to do that. I can go ahead, click on Data Lake Store and I'll have the fields that I need to enter the details and create a cluster on Azure Data Lake Store. If ADLS is selected, the user is expected to provide the tenant IT application ID, principal object, base64 encoder certificate content, and the password that authenticate the application service to read and write on the ADLS. These are prerequisites and are mandatory for creating a cluster with ADLS as the primary storage. You can refer to the documentation to know how to retrieve those details. For now, I will go with Azure Storage or Windows Azure Storage Blob and continue to the next blade. Blade 6 will ask for the required parameters to create the modern repository service and the workflow database user. After providing that, click on OK to move to the next blade. Blade 7 will ask the required parameters of two optional resources to be created. We create Azure SQL Server and Data Warehouse. These are not required for the domain configuration and only needed to deploy the complete solution with the corresponding connections pre-configured with the domain. Here, I can choose to skip Azure SQL Data Warehouse creation or click on skip to skip entire resource creation. So for now, I'll go ahead, click on create, click on create, click on OK, and we can move to the next plate. And also, we have sufficient tooltips that you can point to and know more about the fields. I'll go ahead, click on OK. All infrastructure related details are to be provided in this blade. We can create an Azure storage account or choose an existing account. So here I have already selected to create a new account. Similarly, we can create or choose an existing virtual network. So when, when you are going ahead with uh, an existing HD inset cluster, always choose the VNet on which the, the HD inset cluster has been created. And this is required so that the domain can easily communicate with the cluster nodes. We'll click on OK to move to the next blade. Blade 8 was the final interactive blade and Blade 9 shows us the summary of the inputs that we have provided for the deployment. We can verify the summary once. If things look good, we can go ahead and click on Create. Go to the terms of use and click on create that will start the deployment. We can click on this notification here. This directly takes me to the deployment. I can see the status of the resources getting created here. Now we will switch back to the slide and see what we have covered. So far, we have discussed about the minimum requirements of the deployment and how to search the product on the Azure Marketplace. We have discussed about the deployment paths and also learned about the blades. In the next video, we are going to see how we can debug the deployment if anything goes wrong at the time of solution provisioning. So please do not forget to check our next video. Thank you.